Good morning, brothers and sisters, and happy Mother's Day. Welcome to TLC's, uh, TLC's Sunday Worship. Um, why don't we come before the Lord and sing songs of praise for him. Thank you. 
giving us somebody to care for us, to nurture us, to grow us. Um, Lord, we pray that this Mother's Day, um, that we would encourage them, and uh, that day by day, Lord, that you would um, continue to give them joy and hope, they grow closer to you and their love. And God, as we continue our worship, um, Lord, we proclaim that you are always faithful. Thank you for demonstrating that over and over again. And we promise that you have you at the cross. Walking around these walls, I thought by now.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. You will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the Lord will pierce your own soul too. Good morning. Welcome all of you. It is a, a Mother's Day. It is an important day to remind us how much our parent, our mother has sacrificed for us. But it also reminds us that we don't show our appreciation just one day a year because our mother's sacrifice for us is constant. It is perpetual. And therefore, I pray that the Mother's Day message remind us. First of all, we want to give thanks to our Lord for giving us the mother. And we need to honor our mother. And I want to be Consider that some of you, your mother may not be with you anymore. And I also pray that God's comfort to be with you. And then perhaps there's some of you who may not have a very smooth relationship with your mother. And for that, I also pray for reconciliation and for forgiveness as well. And let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your grace. You are creator of our life. You are creator for marriage and in a family. So Lord, we thank you in our family, you have given us a mother. And thank you to mother that you have shown us your tender care, your comfort and your love. So I want to thank you for all the mothers for their sacrifice, for their children. May you bless them, give them strength. May you comfort them and knowing that it is a most meaningful calling on earth. And may they, knowing that it is your will, it is a great privilege to be a mother and they will constantly be encouraged and demotivated. And I pray that they are their love 
and patience will never run out. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit to be with each one of you of them. Empower them, encourage them, and then give them great joy to continue to taking care, to take care of their children, no matter how old their children are. Most of all, Lord, we want to thank you for giving us the mother. Remind us that we need to honor our mother every day, which is, is your will. And now, may the Holy Spirit be entering with each one of our hearts as we are about to listen to your word. May the Holy Spirit be our teacher, and may your will be done in our life. And I thank you, and I pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. humbled when I need to preach a Mother's Day message. As a guy pastor, how much do I really understand about motherhood? How much do I sense a mother's physical suffering in bearing a baby in her womb for nine months? How much do I sense a mother's physical uh, 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 unbearable de delivering pain? How much do I really understand the hardship of rearing and raising a child? The patience in teaching, comforting, and counseling the teenage children. And then also the experience and the wisdom to comfort and be present with the child when they grow to a young adult. And then this is forever love for her children as long as she shall live. I went through the processes of raising three children with my wife. Still, I dare not to declare that I understand what mothers go through and the challenges that they, they, they face. I pray that our Heavenly Father this morning will give us the message that He, want us, he wants us to hear. On Mother's Day, I want to survey a godly woman's life the life of the mother of Jesus. From the life of a godly mother, and we can learn what God wants us to learn. Now, a godly mother does not need to be perfect. Like Mary, she's not perfect either. However, a godly mother is constantly open to learning and to adjusting. Yeah. And I hope that through this morning's sermon, that we can honor all the mothers and who are here among us in, their, in our city, and then those who are living afar, including my mother in Taiwan. And then we want to honor all of them. In the Gospel of Luke that we just read, Mary is referred as a virgin twice before her name was given a name. The emphasis on her virginity sets up this miracle of Jesus' birth. She was also referred by, by Gabriel, the one who is highly favored by God twice. Although the Bible Although the Bible did not really give us the details of why Mary was chosen to bear the Son of God. The brief description that we read in the message and then a subsequent response from Mary revealed that she was a godly woman. And this gives us insight of why she was a recipient of God's grace, a highly favored one by God. A young girl of such a humble circumstances receive such a special favor. Now Mary reflects her knowledge about God in her song recorded in Luke. 
She said, He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Grace to her is not just limited to receiving mercy and forgiveness. Finding grace with God to her means that God entrusts her with something great to do, great to bear. Now Mary was deeply troubled, actually, when the angel, with the angel's greetings, this may just simply confirm that God's direct, direct intervention in human history is always unexpected, is always perplexing, and then potentially disturbing. I believe every mother who is expecting a baby is a recipient of God's grace. Because every baby is a wonderful gift of God. Life is such a wonderful gift. It is a great responsibility to be entrusted by God. And I trust that the too many uh, godly women, godly mother, when you were first told that you are expecting a baby, you will have the similar sense of humility like Mary did. You will, perhaps you will say to yourself, wow, God entrusts me with such a great responsibility to raise a precious child and to nurture his or her soul? I think this explain, perhaps explains why a mother would devote all her life to take care of her baby. Upon hearing the angel's announcement, Mary asked, how will this be? Please know that she did not ask, how can this be? But how will this be? She asked in what manner this prediction will happen, assuming that it will happen. Now, given the circumstances, as one who has not yet married, has not yet had any sexual relationship with a man, it makes this prediction impossible. But her question sets up the angel's answer. This makes Jesus' conception beyond extraordinary because it was by the power of Holy Spirit. It was by the power of the Most High. Christ is to be divine, divinely conceived. Now, bearing the Son of God in her womb is great privilege. However, enduring the suspicion and rumors from family and neighbors is a heavy burden to bear since she was not yet married. Mary's humble response of her faith basically conveys, I do not know what all of this means, but I trust God to do what is good. She gracefully accepts what the angel told her. She accepts this as true that no word from God will ever fail. Her submission is a key point in Jesus Infancy miracle. Now I know a young couple, they will also accept or, or, or submissive to God's, what God has allowed in their life and their daughter's life. Tim and Stacy have a daughter named Naomi with Down syndrome. When Naomi was young, taking her out was a great burden. The parents were embarrassed by the way the daughters looked. They concerned about what people would think. They were also afraid that other people may not understand how Naomi communicates and may cause trouble. However, it takes a lot of humility, acceptance, and learning. They realize that is not their expectation on Naomi that matters. It is God's. The couple gradually learn to redefine success, and they adjust their expectation on the child. Now every parent has his or her hope on their child, what their child will turn out to be. I'm sure Mary had hers too. But she also realized that 
her child's role and function are determined by God, and then she submitted that her son is also the son of God. Mary also accepts her own role as the instrument of God to be used for his sovereign purpose. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. She just humbly and submissively accepted. Now, Tim and Stacy, they also have learned to let God decide who he wants their daughter Naomi to be. They become their calling, and then their success now is to submit it to that calling. They started looking at Naomi from God's eyes, and then gradually they moved their hearts to the right place. They stopped harboring Naomi. Instead, they empowered her to go out to social. They allow her to freely express her love to anyone she encounters. Every milestone that Naomi achieved, even that is something that the other child would take for granted, the family would celebrate. Naomi turns out to be a great gift of the family. Now the parents are the advocates of their daughter, educating people how, they, how to interact with Down syndrome children. The hardship turns to be blessings. Now Jesus' infancy narrative uh, recorded in Luke 1 and 2 filled with the evidence that the parents were very obedient to the commandment of God. The family went to Jerusalem for Mary's purification after uh, she gave a birth of a boy, and then they also presented Jesus as the firstborn son that both are uh, or prescribed in the Bible, Leviticus 12 and then Exodus 13, respectively. Jesus' parents were obedient to the authority of the Mosaic law. It tells us that Jesus was raised in the garden in the devout family. When I was little, I realized that my mother prayed for me, prayed for her child, for children, and her family every day. And I trust that your mothers, are, you, you all mothers, you are also praying for your children every day. Someone said that behind every great man is a praying mother. The influence of a godly mother through the life of Timothy in the Bible was a great example. In 2 Timothy, there's this brief insight that tells us his grandmother, Lois, and then his mother, Eunice, had a sincere faith, and they pass on to Timothy. And then Timothy becomes a very important uh, co laborer of Apostle Paul. Pastor Stephen Tang is in his 80s now. But he is still very active in preaching and in uh, teaching ministries. He preached to 34 million people in his 140 global preaching tours. Pastor Tang spoke of his mother, a widow, since she was 33. When I was five or six years old, every morning when I woke up, I could hear my godly mother spend one hour in prayers. She, she was said, my Lord, my God, please take care of me and my children. Since you give me so many children, and I'll be in covenant with you, I will raise them up to be useful people in the society. They don't have money. They don't have a father. May you give them heart of wisdom and an attitude of hard working. Through her persistent prayers, decades. Among her eight children, five became a pastor. When the parents brought in a child Jesus to perform the rites, present him as dedicating him as the first child, first born child of a Jewish family, a righteous and devout man 
was moved by the Holy Spirit to meet with family. Simeon. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. After he gave a series of praises to God for the salvation of Israel, he began to provide a hint. That the opposition, opposition will rise against Jesus. He then said to the mother, a sword will pierce your own soul too. A sword will pierce your own soul too. The pain of witnessing her son's rejection, the pain of partaking her son's sorrow, the pain of seeing her own son being crucified, the most of cross, uh, uh, that, that, the most of cruel that, that a penalty that ever invented, ever done to a human being. They are all like a sword piercing through Mary's heart. Mary must learn to accept the role and the function which God has defined for her own son. Dr. Boris Brohan, is an American missionary to Taiwan. The English teaching program that she founded in 1962 has taught English to hundreds of thousands of people in Taiwan. And I am also one of uh, them who were benefited by the program. Now, Doris' mom was a kind and loving woman. With the seven children in a family, the family finance is high. Mrs. Brohan had to buy cheaper bread the, the bread that is not so fresh. But she still told the kids, there are always someone else who are less fortunate than us, and therefore we should help others. Mrs. Brohan has a strong positive influence on Doris' character. When Doris was 12, in the summer camp, she responded to an author call by a Chinese pastor by the name of Ji Zhiwen, to be a missionary in Taiwan. When pastor was calling, who wants to go to Taiwan to help the people there? One little hand from the very, very back of the rows raised. That was Doris. And no one took her promise seriously. They just cheer her, good job, Doris. They tip on her shoulder, good. But Doris took it seriously. She kept up preparing herself to be missionary in Taiwan. And when she was 21, she was ready to get on board a ship to Shanghai. That was 1948. The night before she was ready to board, her mother went to see her. Her mother promised her daily prayers when she was away. Her mother gave her repetitive exhortation and to be careful, like every mother would do. And her mother told her, I won't be able to go to Harvard tomorrow because I will collapse. Can you imagine that in 1948, in China, when the country was completely ripped apart, was torn apart by civil wars between nationalists and communists, can you even imagine any mother would allow the daughter, 21-year-old daughter, to go to a country such as China. Her heart must feel like being pierced by a sword, yet because she was willing, and her daughter, Doris, was able to share the gospel with numerous people in Taiwan. And her English teaching program has strong influence through that, that English education in the country. When Jesus was 12 years old, the family lost him in Jerusalem. And they had to return to search for him. This is the continue. It took him three days. When the parents finally find him, he was in a Bible study with a whole bunch of rabbis. 
And Mary said, Son, why have you treated us like that? Your father and I have been anxious, anxiously searching for you. Now, if I can paraphrase Jesus' answer, he said something like this, very politely. Well, Mom, you know why? You should have known where to find me. I should be in my father's business. I should be in my father's house. After his conception, after his birth, after his presentation in the temple, his parents should have known that he is God's son. And as God's son, Jesus would begin to play out his role in the Father's business. It is not easy to grasp what Jesus said. The parents did not fully understand. Yet Jesus went home with them submissively. Perhaps Mary found it hard to accept that her son is growing up with a mind of his own and his own sense of how the Lord is leading his life. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart. What it means is she's open to understanding what it means. She's open to learn on what it means. Perhaps every mother has an expect expectation whether her child, wherever where her child should be. A doctor, a lawyer, a scientist, or an engineer. She has no problem with those choices. But when it comes to the child responding to a call to be a pastor or missionary, they hesitate. I have known a few parents who serve the church diligently themselves, but when their children want to be a pastor, they become their hindrance. This is perhaps understandable because they realize how difficult the task is to be a pastor or missionary. Mary went through the trouble of letting her son go. She had her expectation on her son. Now in a wedding in Cana, she brought a problem of running out of her wine to Jesus. It is a very, very embarrassed moment for her relatives. She brought a problem to her son, and we know what I mean. When she found him working, when she found his son working too hard, that may endanger his health, she came over and tried to rescue him, and by force if it's necessary. Mary could not get her mind around Jesus' role as the Son of God, his rejection, or even crucifixion. But she was open to understanding and what it all means. She accepts her son to be part of God's plan. Now, we all want our children to live in a, in a peaceful or even comfortable life. But when it comes to our children's calling, we be willing to be the supporter of it. Living in the United States for 33 years, I've seen Christian parents, unfortunately, value their children to enter prestigious universities then they're having a close relationship with Christ. It is said that because of their short-sightedness, because the ultimate blessings of our children come from their creator, not from the parents. Yet, it is true, yes, it is true, oftentimes God bless children through their parents, but away from God, they have nothing. As parents, it is our job to help our children find their calling from God and develop their potentials. It is our calling to help them However, their eternal blessings hinge upon their relationship with God. I have seen this from Stacy, the mother of Naomi. She realized that, that her calling is to help her Down syndrome child to become a person who God wants her to be. And then she has her mind in the right place.
Monica, mother of Augustine, prayed for years for her brilliant son, but a disciplined discipline son would be saved. When she saw that at the council of her priests, she, he listened as she poured out her heart of love and then her intercession for his prodigal son. After the conclusion, the priest said, Go on, Monica, leave me alone. Live as you are living. It is not possible that a son with such tears will be lost. It is not possible that the son of such tears should be lost. So many mothers among us, that your tears, your prayers for your children are guarding them protecting them. Thank you for all your sacrifices because of your prayers, of your care and your tears. You are the instruments of God and to bring up your child and then to be what who God wants them to be. History has demonstrated us that there are godly men and women who are used by God mightily because of the tears and prayers of their mothers. May God bless our mother. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I have to thank you again for giving us the mother. Your amazing, unspeakable arrangement for giving the family a mother. We want to thank you. Continue to bless our mother to nurture their children and then raise them up to be godly men and women. Then I also pray for those who smother are no longer with them. I pray that, that the sweet memory will be constant with them and comfort them. And knowing that someday in heaven that we're going to see our mother. And I, I also want to pray for those who may not have a very a good relationship with their mother. Though I pray for your healing to be with them. I pray for reconciliation. Whether they are still on earth or not, I pray that there's forgiveness and reconciliation. I pray that your wonderful will continue to be manifest in the mother's life of every family. Bless them, nurture them, and give them grace. And I praise you and thank you. I pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Although that we no longer observe the Holy Communion in one room, but where, wherever we are, we are still the body of Christ. And then today on the second Sunday, in the se on the second Sunday of the month, and I'd like to invite all of you to join me to commemorate in our Lord's death for our sin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, wherever we are, in this sanctuary, in the living room, in the bedroom, we are still one body of Jesus Christ. And it's because we share in this eternal life, which is given by our Lord Jesus Christ due to his sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for what he did on the cross to take away the penalty of our sin. And that we may come before him with a face because he has set a path. He used his body to create a new and living way so that we can access to God. We thank you. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. Now as we come before him, come before the, the table, help us to re-examine ourselves. We want to come before him and then we re-examine ourselves to see if we have a sin against God. Whether willfully or unintentionally, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We come before the Lord's table, we re-examine ourselves to see whether we have willfully or unintentionally sinned against our brothers and sisters. 
we are the body of Christ. Lord, if we do, if we have, may you forgive us. Quench us by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. We examine ourselves in our heart. Is there any desire, any worldview that is not pleasant to you? Lord, we pray that our entire body will be cleansed and that it may remain to be the temple of our Holy Spirit. And I pray that the entire church will be a clean, a consecrated place, in the place of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the privilege to be called your children, that we can come before your table. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took out the bread, gave it thanks, and broke it. He said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. By the same way, after the supper, he also took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As long as you are observing the bread and the cup, you are proclaiming his death until he's coming again. And then now, I'd like to invite those who are here in the room to come over and receive the elements. And then for those of you who are at the home, uh, feel free to prepare uh, the bread and the um, cup. Before we partake the bread and cup together, and I like each one of you to pray, and then to contemplate, and then to confess the sin if it's necessary. Let's spend a, a few minutes in prayers. Heavenly Father, help us to confess our sin so that we may partake the bread and the cup in a rightful manner. Examine our heart. If there's anything that is sinning against you, may you cleanse it and forgive us. We pray all of these in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now you can open up. Um, Due to the pandemic situation that we are using this portable one. And then at home, please also get ready so that we can partake together. The body of Christ shed for us. Let's partake together. The brother of Jesus Christ shed for us for the forgiveness of sin. Let's partake together. Amen. Now I want to invite Pastor P uh, to lead us to pray. Let's bow our heads.
this and pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, just as all marveled of all that was said of the Christ child, Jesus Christ, your Son, the whole world marvels today at his love, his mercy, his sacrifice. Lord, thank you for sending your Son, sending the Christ child, sending him to the earth to redeem mankind through the power of the cross, through his life, through his teachings. We, your church, marvel at all that is said about you, Jesus. And Lord, as Mary's heart was pierced, pierced by a sword when he went to the cross, our hearts, our church on earth, was are pierced by his love. Lord, we just lift up. Yes. We lift up this day. We lift it up to you, Lord, as that Christ child. And we lift up all the mothers who've given birth to many other children, many other children of grace, children of mercy, children of love, just like the Christ child. Lord, as we celebrate this Mother's Day, we lift up all the mothers. We lift them up for all of the sacrifice and the piercing of their own hearts through whatever experiences, past and present, they go through. We know that you have a special place in your heart for all the mothers, as we do as a child of you, our Father in heaven. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Christine. Okay, what do you love about them? About her? She cook is nice mm -hmm. and she's nice. Okay, what is your favorite dish that she makes? Food? It's the soup. Soup. All right, sweet. Okay, mm -hmm. Ricky, what is your mom's name? My mom's name, Christine. Okay, what do you love about them? My love is I like she is very encourage me to do anything. Okay, what do you think? How do you think you're similar to her? My hobby is like to her. Okay, you guys have the same hobby. Yeah. Okay, and then lastly, what is your favorite memory with her? My favorite memory with her is we go to the Turkey. Turkey three weeks. Name is Jessica or Xiao Bai Fang. About her. About her. Uh, that she's very supportive and that she uh, pushes me to do my best. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite memory with her? Um, playing basketball outside. Of her waking you up. Turn on these lights. Hey, she did not. <laughs> Name is Jessica. Shao Bai Fang. That she puts in a lot of effort into whatever she does. And, like, um, yeah, she tries with all of her ability to accomplish something. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite dish that she makes? All right, and that's it. Forty. All right. Sushi. And what do you love about her? And every time I have something that um, is going on in my life, or just some news that I want to share about my day, she's always ready to listen. And um, even if she's like really tired, she'll still listen to me with a smile on her face. Nice. I have a lot of similarities. Like. Way more than I have with my dad. Um, we're both like emotional people. And uh, I think we both care a lot. We both care a lot. <laughs> this is not normal. Usually she calls over and over it very patiently, but this was okay. just like a time that she was just fed up. <laughs> yeah, we take forever. Yeah, yeah. Her name is Betsy. All right, and what do you love about her? Me when I need help. Mm. You have a. I have, I have a time when I was um traveling and she helped me because I had to like um I fainted on the street and she helped me get back to the hotel. Favorite dish that she makes. Dumplings. Nice. Daddy Lee. And what do you love about her? And loving and understanding. Mm. <laughs> and lastly, you have a favorite memory with her. Her helping me with math homework. Oh, nice. Uh, my mom's name is Vicky. Okay. Uh, what do you love? About uh, I like that she's very passionate and everything that she does like gardening and cooking okay uh my favorite memory with her is when uh she when we went on a family vacation to yosemite nice. like all her dishes uh because uh she puts a lot of effort into them impression of her uh hi son can you 
download this app for me because I forgot my password. <laughs> All right. Kylie. All right. What do you love about her? Her cooking. I, her kindness and thoughtfulness. Do you have a favorite memory with her? Prom dress shopping with her. Yeah. That one time we like ran together. <laughs> That's not good enough. She's more mad. Stop shopping. <laughs> my god. You know. <laughs> Bang. No bien. Oh. It's a gunny jang. Don't make so tall. Okay. <laughs> nice. That was Hello, moms of TLC. Again, I just want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And I know that it is a very um, interesting Mother's Day this year. However, I still hope that you and your children can celebrate and just have a wonderful Mother's Day. Um, the youth wanted to let you guys know how much we appreciate you and everything that you do for us and also do for the church. Um, do you understand how much you care for us? and how much you sacrifice for us. So I hope that you have a wonderful Mother's Day and you continue to stay safe and happy. And once again, happy Mother's Day and we love you. Oh, happy happy Mother's, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Day.
I want to uh, give thanks to our youth and, and thanks to the, uh, their counselors. Uh, I want to praise God for their energy, devotion, and their creativity. Um, as, 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 as we cannot see face to face, the youth activity continues. And then I'd like to invite all the parents that if your children have not yet participated in youth program, uh, please uh, contact us, contact Joyce, Henry, Amber, uh, and, and Esther, and then so that we can invite them to join. And then uh, also the video that you just saw was a special project by Ambrosian Music Ministry. Okay. And then um, that they have this special presentation also uh, done to, to honor all the mothers. And as you can see that most of the, the pictures are coming from our church family, that uh, we pray that God will continue to use Ambrosian mini, mi, uh, music ministry, and then so that they can use music to spread the gospel, to spread God's word. All right. And then here I have a few announcements. Uh, welcome to uh, today's uh, English Fellowship. Uh, today we celebrate Mother's Day together. Uh, and again, uh, may the Lord bless uh, each of the mother and bless them with godly life and then that is intimate with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, give them influence, give them wisdom and strength and joy and, then, and so that they can continue to influence uh, their children regardless of their age. Right, and then, yeah, and then here, uh, the video that we just watched uh, from Emotion Music Ministry, they have, they have uh, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, the original source was uh, uh, the music ministry's uh, Facebook. So here in the announcement, uh, there's a Facebook address. Uh, please check them out. And they have constant updates. They provide uh, devotional material. They provide 